Hi there, in this series of videos we are creating an end-to-end -end application using AI. And uh, what we did so far is we created front-end and then I also used anti-gravity to connect to code spaces. For you, your setup may be different, but as long as you have an AI assistant, it's fine. So we can continue. What I also described uh, that there are actually some tests, I just uh, didn't see them. So this game logic.test.ts. I think is the important part where the game logic is tested. So what I want to do now is I want to figure out how I run this test because I have no idea. I have never um, written any test for JavaScript, at least uh, for React. Um, so I don't know how to run them because um, they are placed here. So my first prompt to uh, anti-gravity will be help me figure out how to run this. Uh, so that's my prompt. I have tests in my front end application, um, but or for my front for my front end application, but I don't know how to run them. Help me figure this out. And then I also want to include uh, example tests, so it knows where it is actually located. So for the AI, it's easier to figure out. So for me, as I said, it's a bit strange that uh, tests are not in their own separate folder. Uh, they are rather in the same. Uh, Place is the main logic is just test.ts. So maybe this is how it's done in, um, I think it's TypeScript TS, but this is how it's done in the front end world. Um, I have no idea, but um, for me, as long as I can run the tests, I don't care, right? So as long as the tests are there somewhere, um, so I don't know what is that. Run it, okay. So it's just checking what is. Um, yeah, what is where? So it says, yeah, I also see this, uh, you have reached the quota limit for this model, um, but um, then it disappears, right? So now I need to use extensively to reach the quota. And when I reach the quota, then I can simply change, switch it to a different model. That's what I have been, been doing so far when testing anti-gravity. Okay, another cool feature of anti-gravity that I like, but I think um, all other AI systems will soon have it, is this implementation plan. So you have this implementation plan, and then you can give feedback on that. So you can also say, uh, yeah, or whatever. Like if you have some comments about um, this plan, then you can leave these comments, and then the AI will take them into account. So this is uh, I, this is something I haven't seen in other AI assistants, um, but I'm pretty sure now uh, every everyone else will uh, include something similar to that because I, I think it's pretty convenient. Okay, so it is adding a test. Uh, so then it yeah I can see that it actually created a se separate um, folder. Uh, where was it? Yeah, here. And then, okay, I have no idea what is happening, but whatever. Like, as long as we have tests, I am good. I am okay with that. So, one test failed. Okay. So, I don't know what failed, but um, failing tests are not good. So, we need to figure out. Uh, what's wrong and how to fix it. So mock IP test. Uh, mm. Yeah, so when we created, when I asked it to create uh, an IP and consolidate everything in one place, so it created this mock API, I think. So I guess this is where it all is. Like whatever, uh, it doesn't seem very important to for us right now. Um, and I will close all. And yeah, right now we have the tests, and I can run the tests. Uh, and did, do I understand correctly? Where's my package? The JSON. So if I just do npm run test, then I run the tests. Okay, that's good. That's what I wanted. Uh, one test failed. We know that um, let's, I don't like having a failing test, so let's fix that test. 
So let's make sure it doesn't fail. And uh, while it's doing that, uh, I'll just put it on hold and then come back when it finishes. Okay, so it fixed the test. And what I also noticed is, uh, wait, what? I think it did fix the test. Um, yeah. So what I noticed is, well, why is it failing? Um, so another test is failing. So let me just um, tell it. It wasn't failing before, but now it is. So maybe when fixing one test, we accidentally broke another test. I don't know. Okay, let's see uh, what happens. I'm putting this on hold for now. Okay, so I see that uh, it was waiting for file changes and then it detected there was a change and it rerun it. I guess I can just rerun it from here too. Um, yeah, but I um, think what I want to have is when I do tests, it's not in this um, in this mode. So I will add another thing. So now I'll click Q here and I will write um, it asks for like it waits for files to reload but I'd rather just finish the test and um, like I don't want to wait for changes because then it will be a never-ending process and when our AI wants to run something like I'll have to intervene and I'll have to click Q press Q right it's not convenient so let me type that I said I don't want this, I want to run the test and exit. So sometimes it's convenient when I'm developing, when I want to fix something, then uh, it immediately reruns the test. It's fine, but for, uh, okay, v test run. Now, so let's test. I think it's testing it too, right? Oh, we can run two tests in parallel. No. So for AI, I don't want it to get stuck because of that, right? So now it finished. Now, yeah, it's okay. So now no, nothing is happening. Okay, that's good. We fixed the tests, but let's now um, do the important part for this video. For this video, I wanted to start with implementing backend, right? Uh, but before we implement the backend, we need to understand how backend and frontend will interact. Uh, and for that, um, so I think I'll stop now. I'll make this video optional, fix and test. But in the next video, I want to show how backend and frontend can interact. And for that, I want to uh, create a specification, open, AI, open API specification that um, defines how backend and frontend interact. And based on that, we will th then implement backend. So let's see you in the next video.